Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Today, I've got a, a terrific opportunity here to talk with the CTO as well as the CEO and founder of Elafe, which is probably all of you in the auto industry know has been at the forefront of developing wheel hub motors. And we're going to get into what they're working on right now. I'm talking with uh, Goraz Lampish. He's the CEO and Goraz Gotovac, who is uh, the CTO. And uh, thanks for your time uh, today, guys. I really appreciate it. But uh, Mr. Lampish, why don't I, I start with you? You're a co-founder of the company. What gave you the idea to go after wheel motors? Well, uh, there was an uh, inventor, Andrei Detela, who already started to uh, think about how could electric vehicles look like in the future. You know, uh, because when you are making a transition from internal combustion engines to electric uh, propulsion, you don't need to repeat the same architecture. You know, you can think about where you actually need the force, where you need energy. And he realized that if you redesign the electric motor in a way that you can deliver high torque in a limited amount of space, you can actually put it inside the wheel. And this could be the most uh, effective way on how to drive the electric uh, vehicle. So as a physicist, I understood that this is a benefit. Um, I didn't have enough mechanical engineering background that I would be aware of all the challenges. So I thought that this will be you know, realized within maybe five, seven years. And now it's uh, already two decades. However, you know, it really makes sense. And from all of the trends that we are observing now, it looks that the legacy OEMs have realized that this is an interesting architecture for the future. And with the evolution that, uh, you know, the, the way how the technology and products have evolved, now this is a really good fit for many of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, Goraz Gotavak, uh, what were some of those challenges? I mean, yeah, it seems easy. Just put an electric <laughs> motor in a wheel and uh, you're, you're done. But what have been some of the technical challenges to overcome? Yeah, th this is a really good question. So uh, th this is exactly the challenge. You should not look at it as an electric motor. Uh, it's a chassis component. So you should look at it from the chassis component point of view. Uh, it has to fulfill especially, you know, very tough requirements in terms of uh, um, in terms of vibrations, in terms of shocks, in terms of environmental influences, such as temperature from the brake, um, also, of course, water, mud, and these kind of things. Um, so those all make it a multi-physics problem, and it requires a multi-disciplinary team to tackle it, as well as in some cases, it requires you to fail to learn and then to do another iteration of things. So um, I guess these two decades, of course, in hindsight, could be faster, but it, it was well spent in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the learnings that you had to overcome? Sure, so the first thing is that uh, uh, in terms of, uh, um, the requirements, it's a really different beast to an electric powertrain on board. For example, uh, the requirement for NVH. Um, very early on, we, we, we received from a friendly OEM, we received requirements for NVH, so for sound and vibration within the vehicle. And it seemed pretty easy for us to, to achieve it. However, once we did achieve those requirements and put the, the, the hub motor on the vehicle, we found that it was just not good enough. This, the vehicle was horrible inside, inside in terms of sound. And we found, okay, if you bolt the electric motor directly to the chassis, the requirements definitely change. So that, that's one, one example where we really had to dive deep and we have, we have developed new methods, how to make the sounds of an in-wheel car acceptable and today even more than acceptable with some interesting features. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Goraz uh, Lampish, how did you keep the company going for two decades? I mean, that, that's pretty impressive just in itself that you haven't brought anything to the market quite yet. I mean, uh, in, in large volume, how do you keep the company going that long? Yeah, so, you know, with this trend of electric mobility being more and more adopted by different uh, OEMs, uh, there is multiple uh, activities that you can do, you know, so one thing is uh, related directly to the products, but then it's also the engineering services that are related to uh, advancing this technology. Also, you know, the first 10 years were mainly 
uh, internal activities on uh, development, innovation, really polishing the concept, uh, analyzing different layouts. You know, so we have developed motors with uh, inner stator and outer stator with liquid cooling and air cooling with uh, hub bearings, slim bearings, different bearing systems with uh, inverter on the motor, inverter on the vehicle, different types of brakes, different uh, position of uh, rim, either rim being a part of the rotor or a separate part. So a lot of things that are uh, were not clear in the beginning, but you know, uh, all these different prototypes help us uh, you know, mature the technology so that we now much better know what fits best to certain uh, requirements of an OEM, as well as what does it mean if there is uh, some progress in material science or in control, so that there are different aspects and different layouts that can get more interesting uh, with this progress. Uh, so it was a combination of, uh, you know, research projects. We were nicely supported by uh, European Commission, and we did research together with all of the relevant uh, European institutions. Then we sold, you know, some products for some niche markets and some prototype vehicles. And also the OEMs were very interested in learning about these technologies. So we were, we are in multiple projects, you know, where we completed either up to mule vehicles and or sample A, sample B development that are, you know, uh, in up to further progress to get to high volume production. Uh, maybe the most uh, interesting uh, as far as the, you know public announcements were works with the newcomer OEMs. So in the time period of 2021, 2022, there was a lot of activities with uh, company Lordstown and with Lightyear. And, you know, there were actually vehicles that were homologated with our solutions, with our products and very close to get to the market. However, then to the financial crisis, these companies went bankrupt and, uh, you know, now we are in the next wave of doing a similar thing just with, uh, let's say, bigger legacy players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Gotovac, uh, uh, let's go into t some of the issues that uh, people have raised about uh, wheel motors, that they add so much unsprung weight, which would adversely affect the, the ride and handling of a vehicle. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case, does it? And especially not with commercial vehicles. That's correct. So the first thing that's really important is um, we have to get um, numerical here, not just, you know, qualitative. So, uh, of course, it's always better to have lower unsprung mass in terms of comfort. But there is a threshold. What is too much? And as hub motors, as we develop them, and also some, some of the other companies develop hub motors, they got light enough so that the effect of this unsprung weight does not anymore play a significant role. And we just simply prove it by building vehicles and by testing vehicles. And we are not we've not come to the to the point where the technology is good enough for sports cars. So basically for ride and handling of sports cars, which means we really feel that we have proven in this uh, work uh, that that this unsprung weight issue is definitely not something to be scared of. And every OEM that has a car and that has tested cars with uh, inwell motors thoroughly, it seems to agree with that. Mm -hmm. Another issue that's been raised, of course, is, uh, and you mentioned it earlier, uh, sealing it from water. Because if you're going through a, a, a big puddle or even a, a stream or something like that, how do you make sure that no water gets in and shorts out the motor? Well, that's something I, I uh, really cannot tell you here publicly, but uh, let's just say that the most important thing is to understand the requirement. What does the what does the power chain needs to survive and then design the whole system so that it survives those kind of uh, events reliably. So basically, uh, you know, that is designed in that it survives those kind of things. And ceiling is then just one of the measures that, that play into that into that whole narrative. Another issue that's been raised is, of course, you have to run a wire to the, the wheel motor and it's going up and down. And there's been concern that over the life of a vehicle, that's going to fatigue and maybe break that wire. How do you address that issue? So one, one thing which is not, uh, I would say, not considered in this argument is that there are multiple um, solutions like they're already out there. So if you look at any solid axle, you know, 
um, e, e drive it has exactly the same the same problem right so um, what you're right about it it's not an easy it's not an easy engineering problem but it's an, an engineering problem it's not something that would require resources it's something you, you need to do right mm -hmm. so at this stage how motors you know are not a household item even for OEMs which means there is of course this uh, this uh, engineering task that we need to go through together with them uh, to route the cables properly so that they are not stressed in the wrong way. Got it, got it. And uh, Mr. Lampish, uh, how did you uh, how did you get connected with Niapco? Niapco, as you know, the the supplier that's developed this uh, hub motor with a gear direct uh, reduction unit built right into it. Uh, they call it Super Bear. How did that all come about, and uh, what do you think of their efforts? Well, uh, yeah, they reached out to us back in 2019. You know, they had interesting innovation in the field of bearings and they saw us as experts for in-wheel motors and they thought, let's, you know, combine the strengths. And this is what we did. So we are nicely cooperating now uh, for five years. And uh, this is the result that you have mentioned. Uh -huh. And uh, where do you see the future of hub motors going? I, I, I call them hub motors and wheel motors interchangeably. Uh, I, I don't know if you do, but th that's how I've been using it. Yeah, definitely. There are multiple market segments where this can be applied. Uh, you know, some are more high end, some are commercial vehicles, some are some niche applications. Uh, but uh, in the long run, you know, it will be the most effective way on how to move the vehicle. So we see future for that in all the key mass market segments. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, you know, the go to market strategy is a bit specific. Um, the technology has to evolve through normal cycles. And, uh, you know, also different OEMs have different ambitions of how to introduce this technology in their portfolio. However, they are they're all really clear on finding room for this in also their high volume uh, applications mm -hmm. and uh mr gotovac uh where do you see the future going i mean you you hinted that they're not ready quite for sports cars yet but i gotta believe you're working on how to take the mass out of this no no actually what i meant is they are already ready for sports cars oh they we'll, are we'll, oh, oh, oh yeah we'll, we'll be excuse having me some i misunderstood yeah sure sure <laughs> we'll be having some interesting announcements uh very early next year on this topic um but what i see is that vehicles in the future they will need to get more cost efficient so the cost will need to get better and in order for the cost to get better we'll need to rethink how they're built and I see inwheel motors as a fundamental part of that, an enabler for new architectures. And, and you've talked on, on this uh, program, you've talked about the skateboard platform. And they're just a natural fit for a skateboard platform and, and even more than the skateboard platform. Um, inwheel motors are not just because of their placement, the chassis component. They're also because of their function, a chassis component. So thinking about acceleration, deceleration, but also lateral and also vertical motion control. So they're just they're just a, they're not just a power chain component. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see really in the future when OEM wants to optimize the whole vehicle, you know, really holistically, they will they will look at inwheel motors as a key enabler for that. How about integrating steering into it? Yeah. So so corner modules. Um, um, so active suspension steer by wire, brake by wire with in-wheel motors, that really makes a lot of sense. Uh, of course, it's not going to start like that, but there will be certain segments which will take a lot of benefit from the agility that that could uh, provide. Um, we all know how much time it takes sometimes in the automotive industry to get some of these innovations going, but as we expect the autonomous cars to accelerate and let's say higher levels of autonomy to accelerate with the new developments in terms of AI and computational power that's available for AI, that might come sooner than we expect. The benefits might be just big enough to accelerate it. Yeah, listen, I, I, as a hardcore automotive enthusiast, I love the idea of these corner modules that handle everything, that that revolutionizes what you can do with uh, uh, with a vehicle. Uh, but uh, Mr. Lampish, let me go back to you. I'm curious about the name of the company, Elafe. Uh -oh. Does it mean anything? How'd you come up with that? 
Yeah, yeah. So actually, it is the name of the motor, you know, the motor, the first motor prototype that we did. And the reason is uh, Elafe is a Greek name for the Escalapian snake, you know, the snake that's on the medical symbol. And the texture of the skin of this snake is very similar to the winding of the electric motors, uh, you know, that we do. So this is the, let's say, one of the, one of the reasons, one of the similarities. However, it goes also deeper, you know, snakes uh, are very strong animals, they can also make a circle, they are clean, you know, this link to the medical symbol is also something of purity, and uh, this is why, why the name. Also, uh, previous inventions by Andrei Detala hold names of different animals, and then this was, you know, the next one. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you, you cite that guy for hub uh, motors, but, you know, I'm sure you're both aware that uh, Ferdinand Porsche designed a, a hybrid vehicle, 1900, 1901, that had uh, wheel motors as well. So the idea goes way back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I just, uh, you know, during this uh, soccer Euro Cup, I was able to also visit the museum of uh, Porsche in Stuttgart. And I saw that vehicle and uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, product, you know, from 1895, actually. Oh, 1895. And, uh, you know, but the, the ratio in torque, the specific torque that we have improved, I think, you know, it's like 500 times higher what we have now <laughs> compared to that, that motor. You know, that motor is like something around 150, 200 kilos and delivers two kilowatts. You know, now uh, Goras can uh, tell the numbers, but it's I, I calculated the ratio of 500, you know, so it's not like 5 or 10 or 100, it's 500 times. And this makes a change, you know, of how the technology can be adopted, even for very spoiled drivers, of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, used to all of the comfort and the performance that the modern vehicles have to deliver. Well, l listen, I, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I, I really... Uh, uh, Thank you for the time that you've given me today. And, uh, you know, I salute you. I mean, you 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 guys have been out way out in front of everybody on this and you've stuck to it. And uh, I think the market will come to you because the, the solution is too brilliant to ignore. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we like the discussions as well. So uh, all the best.